Welcome to Vibrant Publishers podcast where we interview experts in various fields to share their insights and knowledge with our listeners. Today we are joined by Komal Shah who is an esteemed author of Vibrant Publishers. Komal Shah has 20 years in corporate law and governance across diverse in-house roles. She's qualified in law and company secretaryship in India. She steered India Infoline Limited's IPO as company secretary and compliance officer. Relocating to Dublin, she held multiple corporate governance positions. And after she moved back to India, she scaled Law Seco's content unit focusing on global and US law courses and rose to co-founder status. Law Seco is a legal edtech company providing high quality legal learning courses. Presently, she spearheads Law Seco's business legal clinic aiding startups with contracts and compliance. And simultaneously, she mentors Law Seco students in international contract drafting and compliance, blending theory with practical skills. She's the author of Business Law Essentials in our self-learning management series. Komal, welcome to our podcast and uh, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Nakul. I'm uh, happy. It's my pleasure to be here. Same here. So I would like to begin by understanding what initially drew you to this field and what inspired you to specialize in it. Um, Corporate law normally is a dream of like, you know, many law students, many law students want to pick up corporate law. But uh, I went into it for a very different reason. So I'll tell you what happened. I come from a business family. My dad has a business of his own. And um, when I hear, uh, you know, startup ideas from different founders, like they have so many dreams, so many aspirations in their minds about their business. They want to build it. They want to scale it. And like, you know, uh, being able to help such businesses from yeah. their initial stages to grow up to a certain stage, it's, it's a very fulfilling experience. And that is something that I really enjoy. That's what drew me to this field. Right. Thank you for sharing that. Now, uh, with your extensive background in corporate law and governance, could you share some examples of how understanding US laws can make a significant impact on international business operations? So I'll tell you that um, I work with uh, quite a few international groups, right? So they have entities in multiple countries uh, and some of them who are just beginning to spread wings right so mm. beginning to have a presence outside their uh, their base country okay and most of them favor the us like favor having a presence in the us for whatever different reasons whether it is because a large part of their customers are in the U.S., especially when you're talking about uh, tech startups like like uh, like software development, let's say gaming development, a lot of different things. They have customers in the U.S. Uh, they find it good to be in the U.S. for strategic reasons because often customers want to deal with someone in their own country rather than, you know, Right. having someone uh, outside of the country. Uh, also for investment purposes, so many of them choose to be present in the US. Like there are uh, many companies which have been asked to have a presence in the US by their investors. So okay. that's why the, the, the presence like an establishment in the US becomes like very important or a focal point for multiple different reasons right and um, if you want to have an establishment there like there is obviously a basic logic why you are choosing to uh, choosing that geography and if you have an understanding of what laws re- revolve around that specific logic so for example if i am putting an entity in the us specifically for the purposes of investment then i must know what are the laws that are revolving around that? Like, am I allowed to uh, let anyone invest in my company? 
if they invest in my company, will they be able to like sell their shares whenever they wish? All these kinds of questions have to be known. Like you have to know at least a basic idea of all of these things. In depth, you may be guided by an attorney, of course, but the basic idea you must know based on the logic why you are putting up an entity in the US. And like I said, people choose to do it for multiple different reasons. That's why that geography becomes very important and having a knowledge of laws revolving around that logic especially becomes very important for for uh, an international group. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. That was uh, quite insightful. Now, uh, could you elaborate on what sets your book Business Law Essentials apart from other resources available and how it addresses the specific needs of those who are navigating the intricacies of US business laws? Right. Um, so if you look at most law books, you know, they are written from an analysis of law perspective. So they will be written for people who are studying law or understand law very clear. Okay. So it's written in the form of laws in a specific sector or area or laws of a specific type. And then there is analysis based on that law. Okay. So okay. there may be analysis of sections or, um, you know, interpretation. All those kinds of things are very focused in most law books. But business law essentials, I have written it not from the perspective of lawyers, but from the perspective of founders. Okay. Use that law on whom that law is going to be applicable. Okay. And who would have to understand what they need to do in order to comply with the law. It's not from the perspective of someone who's helping the compliance like a lawyer. Okay. So the way it is written is the thought process behind it is what would a startup have to go through right. okay, in its different phases of development and what laws will become applicable to such startups right from right and that's the basis on which the chapters or the content has been included in the book. So it's more a business book than a law book. We are saying business law essentials, yeah. but the focus is on the business uh, rather than like, you know, the law and the intricacies and, you know, interpretations, all those kinds of things, right? So that is what is different. So, and it's very readable, right? It's not, not in the learned genre as you would call it. It's very much like, you know, something you can pick up and uh, read for just like, just for, just for, you know, reading. Now let's talk about the trending hot topic, which is AI. Now, yeah. uh, in this age of readily available information through technology, uh, what advantages does a book like Business Law Essential offer that AI-driven answers might not provide, like answers from Chat GPT or some other tool? Yeah. Um it's very easy for people to get a lot of answers from AI. There's no doubt about it, okay? So I simply go and ask Chad GPT, what do I need to do in order to get this or do this? It will answer everything. So that answer will be there. But the thing is, in order to be able to use AI, you have to be in a zone where you know what you don't do. Okay, so yeah. for example, I I must know that all right, some sort of security laws applies to me, but what does it apply when I want to do this, or what sorts of things apply when I want to do this? So I have to be able to ask a very specific question, and I want to read it differently. It will just list out the answers one, two, three, four, five. It's not going to give you like you know something that's a that's easy to read. It's going to list out the things for you, right? Right. Then you give it a prompt in a specific manner. You have to be able to know exactly what to ask the AI. Okay. In most cases, people are in a don't know, don't know zone. I don't even know that in order to take this investment, there is any law applicable at all. 
or there is something that applies to me. I just go ahead and do this. And I see this in so many instances. Okay, people people have a very vague understanding. This is what I need to do. They'll just go ahead and do it. They don't even know that there are two, three other things in terms of law that they need to check and comply with. Okay, mm -hmm. so mostly people will be in a don't know, don't know zone. I don't even know that some law applies to me. And for every single action, I can't really go to AI. I have to at least have a broad idea of what the thing, what yeah. applies to me, right? Then I know what to ask. So books like this, I will say, may enable you to pose exactly the right questions to AI because they'll at least tell you that for X transaction, you need, this is the gamut of laws may apply to you. Then you go to chat GPT and you get a listing of what exactly it is that you need to do. Right. Okay. So you come from a a don't know, don't know zone to at least a zone where you know and then you can write kind of questions to chat GPT or to your lawyer or to anybody. But you need to at least start off somewhere and be made known. Okay. I, I'll give you a very a very current recent example. Just a couple of days before, I was speaking to a uh, a founder who has entities both in India and the US. And I have a lot of clients who are in this zone who have entities both in India and the US. And uh, the way this person uh, operated was that he has a consultant who's based in the US. Now, uh, he wants to do specific things. Obviously, he's a founder. Like It won't strike him to ask a lawyer for every specific move that he has to make, right? That's not yeah. going to happen. But he went and, uh, you know, he checked with his lawyers, okay, if I have an employee, what I need to do? If I have a contractor, what I need? What do I need to do? So he was aware that if you don't have employees in the US, then you don't have to do certain things. But then he had totally no knowledge that there was something that would apply even if you are hiring contractors, right? And it's only when he asked this specific thing to the lawyer that the lawyer responded. Okay. So the lawyer is not in this zone to know that, all right, if you're going to do this to, to preempt, you know, to think forward for the founders to say that if you're going to do this, you need to take care of this. Only when the founder asks that question, will that be answered? Same for AI. Only when the question is asked, it will be answered. But books like this can tell you that, okay, there is some restriction that's applicable to you in this zone also. So then you know that, okay, now I have to ask. Otherwise, the founder won't even know what exactly it is that he's supposed to ask. Right? So, so it is, books like these are important for building a strong foundation. And yes. then help yeah. from AI can be taken further on. A basic understanding and then you can use AI and other tools to go into the depth. Or your lawyer, of course, to go into the depth. Yeah. So, so do you think jobs of lawyer, it's a controversial question, but jobs of lawyer might be replaced by AI? <laughs> this question has been asked and answered so many times by now, uh, all over the internet. But What's your uh, perspective? Yeah. Uh, no, but like it only aids the work of the lawyer. And people who know how to use it really well, okay, to save time, because for a lawyer, time is everything. I can tell you that. Like time is money, time is everything. So if you are able to use AI tools in saving time and put your uh, you know, efforts into something that really requires the kind of strategy that AI can think of, okay? Yeah. Uh, then, then that's where you can excel. Your job will not be replaced. In fact, the mundane elements might be taken out of your job and you might even be able to work on the most qualitative uh, things where you really need to apply your mind. Right? Okay, got it. Now, uh, how does business law essentials uh, strike a balance between offering valuable insights and also serving as a cost-effective resource for uh, entrepreneurs? Because many startups have only limited resources including funds for legal consultations? 
that's exactly the kind of startups I need to work with, right? Because they have a lot of dreams, aspirations, and tend to comply with the law also. And I'm saying some extent because many cases people don't even know what applies to them, like I said. So where they know they have an intent, they don't know how to do that, and they don't know who to approach, who will be a reliable guide to them, right? So uh, we work with a lot of startups like uh, like that, where where they don't know whom to approach, where they find the normal, reliable legal advice to be quite expensive. Okay, so law firms which have a reputation for being highly reliable will charge a mob. Okay, and uh, law firms which may offer things for cheap may not have that level of, um, you know, reliability reliability attached to them. So businesses are not sure, like, you know, where to go. And uh, things like this can at least give them an idea that here is the kind of questions you need to ask your lawyer, like I said before. Okay, thus saving the time. If you give a broad mandate to a lawyer, it's going to charge you like anything. Like, and in the likes of US, people charge crazy on an hourly basis, right? Mm. So the more time they have to spend in thinking for you, it can become very difficult. If you know exactly what specific questions to ask, that's the uh, that's the expense that you will have. So you can book like hourly consultations or something, ask those specific questions, get them answered. Okay, but if you give right. a very broad mandate, then it can become very expensive for you, right? So right. books like this will help you to get an understanding of what is it that you need to ask and reduce the cost for you to that extent, right? Okay, got it. So now uh, I wanted to ask in your role at Law Seco, you've, you've uh, interacted with students who are also eager to gain, gain practical experience. So how does the book bridge the gap between theory and hands-on application for aspiring professionals? Yeah, so like I say for students, you know, I have lifted and read some books and uh, and I would say like, you know, how is this written? It's so boring that the way you read it, it's very difficult for you to retain that, yeah. right? You, 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 will, you will start to forget a very soon. Within a week's time, you'll start to forget what you have read in the book because it didn't connect with you. It was like a drawl and you know, you just read through it, various sections, things like that. What I've tried to do is I've tried to make the book uh, to an extent conversational, like someone was talking to. And when you're having a discussion, you retain far more, uh, you know, uh, than what you do when you read something that's like text theory and a draw. Also, uh, the way the books are written is just to give you a theoretical idea of what the law exactly is. What I talk about in my book is how it applies and in which cases it applies. And, uh, you know, what is the thing that people need to do in order to be able to get certain things done. So it's like more how-to okay. kind of book uh, rather than just a text or theory kind of book. And that is something that can help students one it's written in a conversational panel second it's more like a how to write right okay now in your experience uh could you share a case study where uh, a solid understanding of business laws made a big difference in success of an international startup uh, i would if you say international startups which have presence in uh, multiple different countries, let's say five or six different countries of the world, maybe more. In that situation, so they definitely have, uh, you know, software or they have specific advisors to help them with, you know, help them or guide them through the compliances. But where people are just beginning to start out, who have a presence in uh, another, another country, here is where it can make a maximum difference because at this stage they cannot yet have a separate advisor who is going to like provide the compliance in all multiple different countries. So uh, what happens in such cases is that uh, 
uh, is that they still need to know answers to very specific questions. I'll give you one example. One of my clients is uh, is is was funded by Techstars when they were just like you know in India they started their business. They were funded Techstars, which is a very well known uh, well known investor, right? And uh, Techstars was the one who actually asked them like you know that you need to have a presence in the US now and for any additional funding to come through and they actually made the 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 founder go through that whole process have funding in the US. But in order to go through that exercise, he can't just go on and like sign any and all documents that are given to him just like that. He needs yeah. to understand the logic behind why this exercise is being done. What's the purpose? What's the better way to go through everything? Otherwise, everything will just tilt in the favor of the investor, right? Because if he doesn't have that understanding, it can become very difficult to work through. There was a specific like case or an element in the agreements where he needed to have that understanding. And uh, I can't disclose the ends of it because it's a confidential element. But well, yes, if he hadn't known that, then things would have tilted a little bit like, you know, different here, panned out a little bit different. So uh, that's basically uh, where, and founders are quite smart nowadays. I have seen founders actually go research things out because the information is available to them, research things out, ask things, you know, and, uh, and, and know what to do. They will ask, they will try to find out the thing. They'll at least try. But it's very difficult to get everything at one comprehensive place. Like you would have to spend a lot of time in doing that kind of research and getting that uh, a gist of that applicability. That compre on a comprehensive basis, it's very difficult. end up spending a lot of time. And at these stages, on these stages, founders want to hundred percent focus on business development and not go on researching about like you know the applicability of first. So if they get, get, get something that's very comprehensive at one uh, stage, that is something that can be very helpful to, to them. And it can make a big difference to them because like they will have a very clear idea of what they need to negotiate, what they need to change, what yeah. they should talk about, how the transaction is planned, what is the logic behind why things are happening. All those kinds of things, they will get an idea, right? So uh, it's yeah. very essential to know these. Also, this topic, this uh, field of business laws is also a very, uh, like it's ever evolving. So yes. uh, how, how does the book Absolutely. address that challenge of staying up to date? Yeah. Um, yeah. So to be honest, like when books talk of sections or something, that's when they become very restrictive because that section is going to change or a day after or six months down it's going to change right unless yeah. you go on publishing new editions it will be like it will be outdated become outdated definitely but when you are talking about the logic behind why some law was created in the first place okay why does this restriction need to be there or why was this law brought so any changes that happen to the law also will still meet that logic why that law was there in the first place like even if uh, even if changes happen. Uh, also in the book, there are very authentic and reliable references. Okay, so the references that I have taken in the book, very less are taken from like private blogs and most of the references are taken from direct government um, websites. Okay, or reliable websites of like maybe big four or top four law firms or uh, accounting forms or things like that. So, yeah, if you know the sources like this, where you can keep checking for updates, okay? So, you may know a certain logic behind a certain law that this is the reason why this law has come into, come into place or this is the reason why this law was framed in the first place. And you know the source, okay, from where to check for updates or where to look or where to get uh, the exact text of the law or the updated text of the law then you are in a very good place because like you know at some point of time that you need to cross-check on this website. 
but whatever new amendment comes, it's still going to meet that specific logic. Okay, with yeah. the reason why that law was framed in the first place. Okay, so that's how it will okay. help people to be current. Right. Got it. And how, do you think it's difficult for founders or students to learn about laws of different countries? Uh, it very much depends on the interest and the way the, the two years that we had where uh, the world actually became a flat place, okay? The two years of COVID that the world experienced where everyone was on the internet and everyone was like the borders were totally being destroyed. The COVID, it opened up even more because people found a new route which they didn't have in the first place, okay? Yeah. Websites which help to hire freelancing, like Upwork, Fiverr, all these kinds of things. They, the use of such websites increased phenomenally because people realized that there is something like this where I can actually go cross-border and get an expertise or get talent or things like that, okay? And that has kind of made it very necessary for people to think internationally and also be aware of like, you know, different countries and not stay restricted to one place or one country or things like that. Okay, because okay. it's opened up like uh, people reach out much more freely than before. Right, so it always helps for students the, the world that is, that is coming and the, the nature of work that's going to come will will like you know continue to eliminate the borders in a lot of different ways so it's very essential for students to to have a thinking like that yeah okay that there's not going to be borders and i need to need to know more about different countries right now i would like to ask you about your experience your first time experience as a writer and also uh since you, the audience of this book would have varying levels of knowledge, right? And yeah. that can be challenging. So how do you uh, strike a balance between catering to readers who are new to the subject while also providing valuable uh, insights for those with more experience? Right. Uh, so I have been writing in some or other form in I mean, since ages, like, uh, obviously, it's my first time as the author of a published book. And I'm really thankful to Vibrant for that. It was like, you know, a long standing dream. And there are a lot of people who have this dream that I want to be able to write a book someday. And it doesn't materialize in many cases, okay? Very yeah. difficult for people to actually get, give effect to that dream. I'm very happy that I could take that thing off my bucket list, you know, that I want to be the author of a published book. And I'm very thankful to Vibrant for, uh, you know, giving me the chance to do that. Um, I'm very grateful to have you too. <laughs> but, uh, uh, so, so see, when you write something in a very light way, uh, like, you know, which is conversational, uh, even the experienced people funny enjoy reading that. Okay, because they do make sense of you know the, the the large volumes of law that they read through, but it's a it's a breeze, it's a fresh breath, fresh air to them. It's like fresh air when they read something that's very conversational. I like I like reading things which are very conversational. Like if I have to, I have to on a daily basis, I really have to analyze a lot of law and think of interpretations and everything. I find it really fresh to uh, refreshing, you know, to read something that's very conversationally written. So things which are written like that uh, are are uh, very good to read for someone who begins with, and also for someone who's experienced because they like how that is written. They may even yeah. know everything that is there in that, but they like the style how that is written. So they like to like it like a as if they were reading like you know a fiction so it helps people like in that manner right it also yeah. helps them uh, experience people when they are mentoring someone else right so for for a 
beginner reader always it's very good to read a conversational book because you retain more understand more remember more but for an experienced yeah. person reading that style of reading helps because they will be mentoring a lot of other people so it helps them to give an analogy give a an example to someone when they are explaining the things to their juniors or things like that also okay all right thank you so much komal for taking the time today to join us and uh, sharing valuable insights on the field of business law and uh, to our listeners thank you so much for tuning in and we hope you found this podcast informative and insightful thanks once again komal Thank you.